YouTube, it's me, Toy Adventures, here again with another Jurassic World figure review. And as you can tell, today we're going to be looking at the Jurassic World Indoraptor, the superposable Indoraptor. This is the new hybrid villain dinosaur from the new Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom movie. This toy was produced by Mattel, like the rest of the line, and it's probably the best out of the entire line. Now, being a cool looking dinosaur aside, it's also super articulated. And if you followed me on my previous accounts, like Godzilla Gojira, which was one of my older accounts, I love posable figures. And this is right up my alley. It's a cool new dinosaur and it's a posable figure. That's what I've always wanted is a po super posable dinosaur action figure. And Mattel really delivers here. Before I even have to get into all of this, you can see all the different seams of articulation that this figure holds. You got, you got stuff going on with the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, the neck. Uh, another one in the neck, the jaw, the, the thigh, the knees, the ankles, the tail. Okay, this, this figure is decked out. The only thing it's missing is an ab crunch or any ab articulation whatsoever. But I don't think that hinders the figure in any way possible. I mean, sure it doesn't have an ab crunch, but I don't really think it needs it. I mean, as it stands, it's already a superbly articulated uh, figure. Especially considering it's Jurassic Park, which, you know, they've never really been too articulated. They focused more on the sculpt and the paint than they ever did the articulation. But this figure nails all three. It nails the sculpt, the paint, and it nails that articulation. Another thing that separates this figure from the rest of the toy line is its box. Now I'll flash a picture of the box right here. Alright, and now I'll flash a picture of the box for the Thrash and Throw T-Rex. All right, now you can notice something clearly different. The, uh, the, the, the Indoraptor's box is blue as, a, as opposed to the rest of the lines, you know, orange and lava and yellow and red. Um, and it also has a more forested background. Now this is what I, this is my theory, that it's supposed to replicate the Lockwood Manor and the, and the setting that the Lockwood Manor takes place in. If you've watched the trailers, it's not really a spoiler because it's just an environmental thing. But the Lockwood Manor is uh, located in a forested area and the box has a nighttime feel and you've all seen that clip of the Indoraptor climbing on top of the manor at nighttime so it's really cool that they gave him a, a, a scene specific box and not just a generic or you know lava one where you're probably never going to see him at so kudos to Mattel for adding that in now uh, I've had this figure for a while ever since I uh, think even before uh, the release date, I think I got it two days or three days before April 16th. I believe that was the uh, release date. I got them two days before. I was hunting through all the Walmarts for the new figures, and I found this one, Thrash and Throw, Super Colossal, uh, the Roar Vores. I think that's it. No, I found the Gyrosphere truck, too. I didn't find the Carno and the Stego till later. So, as you know, I've had this figure for a while, and I know all of its flaws, all very few of them. But I also know a lot of where it shines. And where it shines is just straight up posability. This thing is very stable. The feet, right here, they act as great, uh, great stands. They're, they're well designed. You can get this figure in a, in a number of different poses, and it won't just, you know, plop over like other articulated figures. Uh, people have been comparing this thing to NECA, NECA quality. What I'm about to say is very controversial, and I and I beg you to just bear with me. It's way better than NECA quality, because NECA quality isn't that good. That's just my opinion, but I don't think NECA's that good. I know a lot of you are mad, but I went through the troubles of the NECA Pacific Rim line, and that was... They were good, but one wrong move, and it's broken. This thing is taking tumbles like you've never believed in. Uh, it's fallen out of my backpack. Uh, when I went to, when I go to take pictures, it falls off my bed every now and then. It falls off the shelf. It it can take a tumble, and it'll just be fine. I can't speak for all of the people owning this toy, but at least mine seems pretty sturdy and even more articulated than some NECA action figures. Now, I've talked a lot about its uh, uh, posability and its articulation, but let me just show you a quick slideshow of some poses I've gotten with this thing. All those pictures 
and much more you can find on my Instagram, which is by the same name. It's Toy Adventures on YouTube. Same uh, profile pic and everything. So now that I've shown you the kind of poses you can get into, let's finally get into the meat and potatoes of what this figure is all about in its name, the Super Posability. Now to start us off, it has the basic, every dinosaur has this uh, jaw hinge. You get nice up and down movement, but then you get a nice uh, head, or a head ball joint right here. You get all kinds of uh, 360 movement right there. Any pose you could really want. And you get another ball joint down here in the neck that allows for even greater neck posability. You can get them way looking way up. You can get them looking way down. You can get them looking all the way to the sides. Even up behind him. So he's got full range movement. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get him to stand when you're moving around so much. Plus mine's joints are a little loose since it's so old. It's actually less than a month old. I've just taken a lot of pictures with it, so it's kind of loose now. Moving down to the shoulders, we get a nice hinge and twist right here. Still not completely familiar with what this is called, what kind of hinge that is. But you got another one of them down here in the wrist. Get nice in and out. And uh, round around. And at the, uh, no, elbow. I have to say elbow. This is the wrist. And the wrist is the same deal. You get the in and out motion like this. And the twist. So you get a bunch of articulation in this arm. And it's just superb. You can have him grabbing somebody, resting on the ground. You can even put it to his own chin and have a shocked expression. It's really, really impressive what Mattel was able to engineer here, especially for the low price point of only 20 bucks. Now, in, in the case of how big this is, this would be an Ultra Deluxe and NECA scale, so that's cheaper than what Ultra Deluxes would be, which would be more around 30 or $24. So kudos to Mattel for keeping it cheap and affordable for the rest of us. Now, back onto the articulation. You got a nice, you got the standard uh, articulation that all the other dinosaurs in this line have in the legs. Where you got the uh, 360 rotation, and then it can move out and in a bit. Just want to make sure I'm getting that on camera. Then you got another hinge down here at the, at the thigh, I mean at the knee. You can go in that much, out that much. You have a completely straight, and it can rotate all the way around. And the same goes for the ankle. The ankle has the same kind of joint. You got this nice in and out. And a nice twist. And all of those joints combined create an incredibly articulated leg. Where you can get in a multitude, a plethora even, of different poses. Now, on to the tail. The tail is articulated in two segments. You got one right here at the base, and it's pretty much just a ball hinge. It, you can't fully twist it because of the way it's shaped. It's shaped like an oval, not a circle, so you can't really get a 360 motion out of that. But that's what I'm showing you right now is the full range of motion you can get out of that. And then you have right here near the end of the tail, which is the same story. See, if you try and bend it, you can uh, bend the plastic right there. So just don't mess with it too much. So that about does it for the figure's articulation. As we covered, very, very impressive. Now let's move on to the character's sculpt and paintwork. Bringing it up and close here for this, so you guys can really get an idea. Because some of these figures have had paint defects where like the eye might be down to like on its chin or something, or its cheek. Mine's in pretty, pretty tip-top shape, so I can't really say anything about paint defects for my case. But other people have been finding them. So, for the teeth, we get just a, a bit of a, you know, yellowish white paint just dipped on there. You can see that some of the base of the teeth are still black. A bit of a lazier job. Uh, down here in the mouth, let's get that in the light. The tongue is a nice red color, as is the rest of his mouth. Now, you'll see that blood detailing. That's not on the figure uh, at purchase. I actually added, put that on when I was doing pictures with blood. You can find that also on my page. Not to uh, plug in too much, but I'm just saying, just check it out. Moving down the body, you have this nice gold stripe. It's almost re rem reminiscent to Blue's blue stripe going down her body. And it starts right here at the base of the head and moves all the way down to about the middle of the tail. 
and it's a mixture of a nice orange and golden orange on top with the gold on the bottom as you can see and the rest of the figure is sculpted with these nice uh, pebble like scales going throughout the entire body and on the top you have these uh, shingling ridges up here mixed with these raptor quills that are also on the top of the head and on the forearms they're a little bit smaller there but you can still see them moving down the leg we got the nice raptor claws uh, the rap really raptor at this point is the only thing we know that's what's in it uh, the rest of its components you know what it's been mixed with to be made are classified as the, as the as it stands but they'll soon be revealed so we'll get some explanations for the other features of this, of this character like the uh, four, four, four clawed hands uh, this is what really caught me off guard is the four clawed hands the Indominus Rex had the same thing so I wonder what they have in common to, to both have these kind of you know opposable thumb hands that just adds to the danger of it because now it can grip stuff and open stuff and even carry stuff moving up from the top you can just see all the detailing going into this thing very very impressive not too much but for what you pay you're getting a really good deal it's definitely worth it there is another one coming out in august and i don't even know if i'm going to need to get that one this one's just satisfied me so much now before i get on to the scaling i want to give my thoughts on the indoraptor character himself um i i like it a lot more than the indominus i can tell you that much this character looks way more threatening uh, way more intelligent and way more capable of getting his his work done, you know, killing. He looks like a much more capable killer than the Indominus where it's big and sluggish and it has to break through stuff where this guy can just climb through stuff. So as where you could hide in a building from the Indominus, you can't do that with this guy. He can just go straight through the door. Hell, he can open the door and get in there and you got really no defense. I heard from someone it's bulletproof too. I don't know how accurate that is. I'm sure like standard rifle bullets, submachine gun bullets, or pistol bullets it can deflect. But I'm not sure about like 50 cals or even uh, 14 millimeters. So yeah, I, I like this one a lot more than, than, the, than the Indominus. I still hope Mattel does an Indominus figure because that would be like an apology letter from what Hasbro gave us. And I can't even show that because I sold it because I was so unimpressed with it and it was just wasting space on my shelf. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the character. Now let's get on to scaling. How does the Indoraptor fit into the rest of the Mattel line? Now to start us off, we have the Carnotaurus, which is a lot of people's favorite from this line. And by the way, Carnotaurus is up next for a review, so stay tuned for that. As you can see, at, a, at, a, at the Indoraptor's like default neutral stance, the Carnotaurus is just a tad bit taller than him. And they're the same price, even though the Carnotaurus doesn't have nearly as much articulation. Come on, Mattel. We want another super articulated dinosaur. Come on. Give us another one. And nose to nose. Now you can really see uh, the Indoraptor size difference. Actually, it's not a bit fair. Let's move his head up just a bit more. There we go. So now that's not as, as significant, but the Carnotaurus still is taller than him. There's no getting around that. So on next, let's move to the... Uh, let's move to the Stegosaur. Uh, with the Stegosaur, I guess that's a pretty good size up. Like, like I said in my previous reviews, we don't know how tall this Interruptor is supposed to be in comparison to other dinosaurs or even humans. So as far as we know, this could be too small or this could be just perfect. If this is just perfect, then this thing is something to be feared if it's that big, that dangerous, that capable, and that intelligent. I don't know how our heroes are going to overcome this, but I'm... We're going to find out. We're going to find out soon enough if this thing can overwhelm them or they can find somehow to defeat this. And then face to face, here they match up again. Uh, no real comments on this, just showing you how big it is. Next, let's do the Baryonyx, the most popular of the rower board. Here's how they match up. Now, just a, big, uh, a bit of fair warning. I've been experiencing this through the cut um, of me recording this and... Be careful when you get your Indoraptor if you use it too much or via play, photography, posing. If you pose it too much, its joints will get a bit loose. That's one of the flaws I have with this, is the joints can get pretty loose over time. But enough of that. Here's a size comparison between the Rovor's Baryonyx. Um, 
People are going to ask me how I keep the mouth closed. Uh, I'll review that and show you guys that little neat trick in the review for the Varionics. Uh, when's the Varionics review coming? Probably after the, either the Thrasher Throw T-Rex review or the Carnotaurus uh, review. I'm going to put it up on a vote on Instagram and you can vote after the Carnotaurus review is completed. And you can vote if you want to do the Barry or the Thrasher Throw next. Here they are uh, face to face. Now, admittedly, I do have this guy propped up a bit just so he can stand because uh, his, his ankles are really loose on mine. But still, either way, the Indoraptor is still going to be taller than the uh, berry here. So the fact that we're getting two medium carnivores in this movie is pretty impressive. One a real dinosaur and one a genetic hybrid. Now, I'm, I'm more excited to see the berry and the carno because those are two dinosaurs I love that I've never seen in a Jurassic movie before. We've never seen an Indoraptor, but no one was really hyping up this until it was, you know, announced with the movie. But people have been hyping up Barry and Kono since the first movie, and probably even since the third. So the fact that we're finally getting them is why I'm more excited to see this guy and the Kono. And last but not least, here he is with the Thrasher and Thrower T-Rex. Um, I don't know if this is scale accurate or not until the movie comes out, but if it is, then the T-Rex, I think, is days or numbered. I'm going to be honest, I love Rexy to death. I like the buck more from The Lost World, but that's another story for another day. But I think her days are numbered if this is going to be her adversary. Or maybe not, maybe they won't fight at all in the movie and it'll just be Blue versus the Interruptor. But I have a feeling they're going to use the T-Rex again. I mean, how can you have an ending sequence in a Jurassic Park movie and not have a T-Rex in it? You know, you have to be a good Jurassic Park movie to have a T-Rex finale scene. A good one. A good one. Not Jurassic Park 3. Surprisingly enough, the T-Rex is only slightly taller than the Indoraptor, and you, you wouldn't think that when at first glance of the T-Rex, since it's such a, a larger figure compared to the rest. But yeah, they're actually pretty evenly matched. Um... Which may, which all, which just uh, furthers my expectation that the Indoraptor would win if they fought one on one. I'm almost positive Indo would win, but maybe if if T-Rex had Blue and Owen again and maybe some Mercs, they could pull off a victory. I said the T-Rex one was the final one, but I completely forgot to show you guys a human figure. So that's my apologies. Here we go. We got the Legacy Collection. Uh, Robert Muldoon. I know I keep using him, but he's the first one I pull out of the, the figure bag. So, yeah, this guy's still pretty big. He's not nearly a raptor size. Maybe a Utah raptor and a large one at that, but definitely not raptor size. So, uh, he's got to have something else in that DNA of his. Alright, so finally we can wrap up the review and I can give my final thoughts on the character before I sign off. Is the character worth it's price point. Is Indoraptor worth 20 bucks? Yes, this one is definitely worth the money. You could get worse figures for a higher price in the, in the, in the modern toy market. So the fact that this, this much detail and articulation is only 20 bucks is phenomenal. So I definitely recommend buying it. Not to mention that it's a critical character in the new movie. It's the new mutant. So you kind of got to get it. Kind of got to get it. I don't know how I said that right the first time. You like dinosaurs, or you like cool monsters, or you like articulated, even kaiju in general? I say definitely pick him up. Pick him up if you can find him. And it's such a popular toy that it's being torn off the shelves at the Mosasaurus and the Ellie Sattler as soon as they get on there. But if you're lucky enough to find it, don't even think twice. Snatch it, and you'll never look back. I never did. I love this figure. And I might even buy the one coming in August. I doubt it, though. This one's having me satisfied. But you guys, if you guys stay tuned, you guys will find out. Here's its little uh, scan thing. If you guys want to screenshot that and use it in an app. So yeah, that's pretty much gonna do it for this review. Um, I apologize for the poor lighting, uh, poor lighting situation. You know, I only have light coming from uh, over here, and nothing coming from uh, over here. I'm gonna plan on getting more uh, better lighting and a mic, so I can have better sound. I know people have been complaining about this. Distant audio. That's because I don't have a mic. I'm recording just with my phone. But you know, I, I'm making it do until I can get better equipment. Um, as I get bigger and bigger, I can get more and more equipment because I'll have a reason. 
you know, I won't just be shoveling money into a hopeless account. So if you guys want to see better quality content, please subscribe, like the video, and have a great day. This is Toy Adventures, signing out. Have a great day, guys.